Welcome everybody to High Tech Live. Bienvenidos. If you're new to High Tech Live, welcome. I'm Viviana Costa, Executive Director of High Tech. High Tech Live is our bi-monthly series where we bring the Hispanic technology community together to connect, share, and learn something new. This is an open session where we're gonna welcome comments and questions, so don't be shy and turn on your cameras, please. We wanna see your lovely faces. Um, familia, I'm super excited about today's session this afternoon, and maybe for some of you this morning, we get to talk about baseball and technology. I find it such a treat to be able to talk about such a beloved sport experience and how technology has allowed us to amplify the experience. Today, we're joined by Major League Baseball and Extreme Networks for a fireside chat discussing how networking technology is going to enhance the game day experience and how cloudifying infrastructure is helping MLB gain enhanced mobility and analytics. So welcome MLB and Extreme Networks. Um, so for those of you that love baseball and love technology, um, we've come to the right place today. I wanna to thank Mitch, Ariana, and Jimmy for joining us today, so welcome. Before I introduce Mitch, who is going to be moderating today's session, a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, we're gonna have time at the end of the discussion for your Q&A, so have your questions ready. And as always, feel free to connect and comment using our chat. And for those of you that can stay, we'll have an opportunity to continue the discussion during our networking break after the session for an additional 30 minutes. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce Mitch Reyes, who will be leading today's conversation. Mitch is based in Miami, Florida, and is the Community Program Manager at Extreme Networks, which is a new silver partner for high tech to the high tech familia since April. So welcome. Mitch focuses on managing a sales and technical community within the company's channel partner program and helps them grow their business and pipeline. And so today he'll be leading today's discussion. Welcome, Mitch, and thank you, Ariana and Jimmy, for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you very much for the warm introduction. I really appreciate it. And I want to introduce uh, our two main speakers today. Uh, we have Ariana from MLB, and then we have Jimmy from uh, Extreme. So uh, Ariana is the VP of uh, Infrastructure for the Major League Baseball. And then we also have Jimmy Serrano, which is our uh, marketing manager. And he also personally manages the MLB relationship. He also used to be in the MLB himself as a former uh, pitcher. So uh, we're going to have two, two conversations today. It's going to be a really interesting fireside chat. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to lodge over the first questions over to, to Ariana here. So Ariana, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get to where you are today? So I'm Vice President of Technology Infrastructure Operations for MLB. And I was born and raised in New York. I'm a native New Yorker and I stand by that. I moved to the Bay Area back in 2017. And I originally started my career out wanting to pursue a path in television and film, in journalism and casting. That was my interest. But at the time, there wasn't a lot of opportunities. So I applied for MLB to MLB as a production assistant and lo and behold I worked my way up the ranks to get to where I am today and that's how it started. Well it's a uh, that, that, that's really interesting uh, change over from you know from different yeah. uh, disciplines if you will so um, you know tell, tell us a little more about what your role is today and you know how, how'd you make that shift over from uh, you know the production side of the house over into the IT sector. So this was really early on in MLB Advanced Media, which was the former human company for MLB before we merged into what we call Run Baseball. But prior to then, that's when we were really focused on the MLB.tv project um, and initiative. So when I came in, they were just looking for an extra set of hands. But what was wonderful about that opportunity, opportunity was that MLB Advanced Media, they allowed you to really get your hands dirty. You know, you were able to work with the engineers in the lab, testing out new gear. We had a variety of different projects that were not just isolated to baseball. It was figure skating, volleyball, all of these wonderful productions that we were doing. And then I noticed a shift in the technology. And when the commissioner came in and really wanted to emphasize bringing technology into baseball, I saw what this group was doing. And I had an opportunity to kind of get my way in there as a project manager. And from there, it just completely took off. 
the knowledge that I gained from working with these engineers and, and this wonderful group, it, it really gave me that technical background that I didn't have, uh, sorry, that technical knowledge that I didn't have in my background. So everything that I've learned, it has been from the hands-on experience at MLB. Uh, so that, that's fantastic to hear. And, it, it, you know, it's nice to hear that, um, you know, you learn that on hand because sometimes, you, you know, when uh, I, I don't know if you, you feel that way, but when, when I describe people that I'm in the IT space or something like that, sometimes people think that, that you know, you need to have all these, um, you know, special certifications mm -hmm. and degrees just to get in. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's refreshing to hear that, that you were able to acquire those skills while working within the industry. So, you know, that, thank you very much for sharing that. Um, for a second, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Jimmy real quick so he can introduce himself. Um, Jimmy, t tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I know you're here from, from the extreme side, but uh, fun fact, Jimmy Serrano actually used to be uh, in the league himself. So, Jimmy, off to you. Sure. Uh, thanks, Mitch. Uh, yeah, so I've been with Extreme. I'm on the marketing team here. I've been, I've been with Extreme roughly about eight months. Um, prior to that, uh, I was with a couple other IT companies as well, both on the, the marketing side and on the sales side. Uh, and then prior to getting into um, the IT world, uh, I did play professional baseball for 10 years total, um, including minor league and major league baseball. Also played in Korea, Mexico, Puerto Rico. So kind of all over the world. Um, and then there was also, you know, a handful of years where I was uh, doing a lot of lessons and coaching teams, uh, actually including Grace's son, who's on the call right now, I uh, coached her son, uh, Santos, for a couple of years, who will always be 12, year old, 12 years old in my mind. Uh, but uh, I do still work with a lot of kids these days, uh, doing camps and clinics, um, still stay connected to baseball. But um, yeah, over the last six years, I've been uh, involved with the IT world. And, you know, I, I'm lucky enough to get to, to manage the MLB relationship that we have here at Extreme. Very cool. Very cool. So um, we, we did notice that you have, um, you know, you played, uh, if I counted right, seven different baseball teams. Is that right? Um, so what what positions did you have and, and what was your favorite team? So I was a pitcher and uh, I don't know if I have a favorite team. I was, I was drafted by the Montreal Expos. Uh, that kind of dates me a little bit. Uh, who are now the Washington Nationals. Um, I got, got traded to the, uh, to the Mets, uh, traded to the Royals, also played with the A's, Reds, Red Sox, and Marlins. Um, so yeah, seven different organizations over 10 years. Um, I, I have to say Kansas City was probably my favorite team just because the, wow. that's where I got the opportunity to play in the big leagues. Um, I also enjoyed the, the Red Sox organization the A's organization and, and several minor league uh, teams as well. So for me, it's when I look back on it, it's more, it was more about the, the team and the camaraderie amongst the players and, and stuff like that, that I really enjoyed the most. Very, very cool. Um, and it's just, it, it, it's, it's great to hear that perspective because I, I don't think a lot of us here, you know, we, we always see people uh, playing in the MLB as, as these unattainable uh, figures, right? That you, you don't get the chance to see. And it's just great to have like a conversation and saying, Hey, look, you know, we got somebody here, Jimmy, he's just like a regular guy, like the rest of us. And, you know, um, we, we go through the same challenges together and, uh, and we'll touch up a little bit more on and, and get into some insights of, uh, you know, what you were, um, what you went through during your, your transition. Cause I think we all want to hear how'd you, how'd you go from LLB into the real world, like the rest of us. So for those of you wondering we're going to get into that in a second but i want to I, I want to pass the ball over to ariana here for a second um I'll, I'll admit i did i did do a little bit of research on you myself and i i noticed that you came out on uh latinas in motion uh, impacting sports industry uh on latina style magazine so she was actually nominated on latina style magazine for this and uh how do, how do you feel selected um in that group of 14 uh women that are impacting your industry recognized in that space is a huge honor, especially alongside women. You know, I, I went and I looked at the article after I found out it was published, and these women are extraordinary. You know, they're breaking barriers. They're reaching heights that I can honestly say I didn't even imagine was possible until I started surrounding myself with 
you know, these types of individuals. So I'm very proud of that and my family's proud and I just want to, you know, be an example for my daughter. So I, I'm very honored to be alongside those women. Uh, that's awesome. And we, I heard you have a daughter. Uh, you can you share a little bit more about that and that journey? Um, it's been interesting during the pandemic, I'll tell you that much. Um, she's only two years old. So really, we've been together this entire year, you know, managing work and, you know, trying to teach her how to talk and do all of these different, you know, basic life skills. And, you know, the blessing in disguise, even though we've had to, you know, all go through this traumatic experience of a pandemic, I got to spend this time with her that I otherwise would have never had if I was going into the office eight hours a day and commuting. So she's energetic, she's lively, um, she's a variety of different nationalities and ethnicities, and I'm really proud of that. And I just want to empower her to be a strong female. <laughs> Oh. That's awesome. That's great to hear. And I, I'm, I'm glad you really got that that time. Um, you know, that kind of hits yeah. a chord myself and I'm about to embark on that journey myself. Um, my wife and I are expecting in October. So uh, I'm kind of looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm looking forward to that uh, myself, to be honest, the whole, you know, work from home. It, I've been working from home forever, but my wife is, uh, it's new for her. So um, so on that point, I, I think that's a great segue to, you know, talk about uh, what kind of an impact has uh, being Hispanic had, uh, you know, on your, not just on your career, but also on your personal life too? How did, how do you think that it uh, affected you? Yeah, this, that, this is a very interesting area. Um, and I think I look at it two ways, you know, on a positive note, I had mentioned, I, I come from a multicultural background. So on both sides, especially on the Hispanic side, there is a huge emphasis on family, community, work ethic, respect. So those elements, those values translated into my work environment, you know, working hard. I've been working since I was 14 years old. It was, there was never any other option and I will continue to work until I no longer can. So making sure that, you know, not only are you taking care of yourself and your future, but also having the opportunity to take care of your family the way that they've taken care of you. Uh, also that element of family, you know, when you're working with your team members day in and day out, they, they become an extension of your family and trying to have compassion and treating individuals for the people that they are and how they contribute, not just as a team, but you know, as an individual, I think that's important. And I, that all stems from, you know, from your, your own life. Um, but at the same time, you know, that, that might be the positive aspect. The negative aspect, when you are multicultural and you come from a variety of different ethnicities, I think growing up, people want to box you into a category. You either have to be this or you have to be that. And, you know, that was challenging for me when I was younger because I, I didn't want to be put into these categories. I, I, it's uncomfortable when people ask you, what are you? Oh, oh, oh you're exotic looking. That's, that's, it's inappropriate. And, you know, nowadays I think people have the tools and the resources and the knowledge to combat that. But, you know, years ago, it just, it, it created awkward situations. And I think when I fell into my career, there were moments where I was very uncomfortable, or I guess you could say I had a lack of confidence because I would look around the room and not only was I the only Hispanic person in the room, but I'm the only female in the room. I'm the only Hispanic female in the room. And you you recognize that early on. So sometimes that can be a little intimidating. So I think it took a few years for me to build that confidence and you know figure out my, my place and how I can have a voice. Um, but yeah, there's two different ways to look at it. You know, positive side is you know bringing the, those, those values that I get from my Hispanic culture. Um, and, and, and bringing those elements into my work life, but, you know, also trying to combat some of the concerns because, you know, diversity is a, is a big 
focus for a lot of organizations right now. I think we really need to make sure that we have a diverse team. And, and I think MLB is doing a tremendous job in opening the door for that opportunity. Um, and I think it's very different today than it was when I started. So I think those are really the two aspects. You know, that's how I view the impact on my career. Oh, it's fantastic insight and just a lot more than I, I could ever expect, really. Um, so a question for you. I know, I know you mentioned that you were multicultural. For those of us that aren't aware, what, what, what are your other cultures do you hail from as well? Dominican, Puerto Rican, Jewish. <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, stuff in there. <laughs> there's some Russian, um, but yeah, uh, mostly on my dad's side, Dominican, Puerto Rican, and then on my mom's side, Jewish, Russian. Very cool. English, so, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so you, you, your 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 holidays must have been interesting to say the least. I did my twenty three and me, and it is spot on. So <laughs> I feel exactly where I come from. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna lodge the same question over to Jimmy. Um, you know, Jimmy, for you, what 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 impact did being Hispanic have on your career? And um, you know, what what kind of uh, values uh, helped shape your career? Uh, going into MLB and, and even into tech as well? Uh, I mean, I'll, I almost say the same thing that Ariana said is it, it, for me, it was all about family. You know, I, I, I come from, you know, a lot of aunts and uncles and cousins and, um, you know, everyone supporting each other, just having that type of support system and, you know, everyone pushing for, you know, anyone that's doing anything and just being there behind them, I think was a, it's a huge impact on me. You know, I, you know, I grew up in a, in a family where things didn't seem to be limited as far as potential I could reach. You know, I, I, my parents were always, you know, I'd throw out some crazy idea that I wanted to be a major league baseball player and they would just come back and say, Oh, you can do anything you want as long as you're willing to work for it, you know, and then going to games and having, you know, not only parents there, but cousins there and, you know, just having that full family support, uh, I think really impacted me as far as, you know, following my dreams and, and continuing to push forward and, and seeing something that, that, that seems unreachable to make it reachable. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it, Jimmy. And then, um, it, the, the question I, I'm sure most of us are wondering, um, what, what come, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the values and what have you. So here, we know you started in the MLB and then you went ahead and shifted into IT. So what compelled you to make that transition into IT and um, what skills from baseball uh, did you have that transferred into the IT industry that have made you successful? Yeah, I mean, I wish I could say it was like a well thought out plan, um, but it was, you know, just uh, I finished up playing baseball. And like I said, I, I got into coaching and, and doing clinics and camps and such with kids. And then um, I have three kids myself. So my oldest was getting to the age where, you know, he was starting to play and get pretty involved with baseball. Um, so I felt like I had a decision to make of do I continue to, to, to coach kids over here while my kids playing over there or do I start looking into other areas to get into and um, I just happened to you know find a, a business development position with uh, with an IT company and got in and it was really my first experience with the corporate world you know so I kind of felt like a, a fish out of water and um, but I think I relied heavily on on my baseball experience and just kind of you know, getting in at least starting on a team and then kind of getting the, the, the lay of the land and figuring out the landscape and, and, you know, what, what I can bring to the table, you know, what, what, what value do I add to the team that I'm on? And um, I think from there, you know, a lot of those, those baseball um, lessons that I learned along the way, I, I just applied them in the corporate world and, you know, it, it helped to, to, you know, not only look at, um, what I bring to the table, but also look around and see, okay, what, what other areas do I think that we can improve on as a team? So um, I think it just kind of, it really helped, you know, parlay all the baseball experience, family experience and roll it into the corporate experience. Yeah. And, 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 and let me tell you what a journey to do that 180 pivots. Uh, some people don't do those career transfers. So uh, 
easily. You make it, you make it sound like it was, uh, you know, you were able to tackle it thanks to the experiences you learned in the MLB. Yeah. I mean, nothing was easy getting to the MLB and nothing's been easy with the corporate world at all. Um, you know, but, uh, it, 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 it takes those lessons learned and, you know, hopefully don't repeat the, the mistakes and, you know, just keep trying to work towards the next level. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, going in, uh, you know, changing things up, I'm going to go back to Ariana here for a second. Um, so we, we've already talked a little bit about your career and your and how you rose up to the ranks. So um, let's let's focus a little more on on the current role you're in at the moment. So is there anything that really stood out um, about your journey to your your current role um, that you'd like to highlight, or you know what what's been let's say top top three uh, events that have occurred in your journey to your current role? That's an interesting question. I do know that the probably the most pivotal point in my career was what I had mentioned before, where I saw what the technology group was doing at the time, and I wanted to be involved in that. And I'm so glad that I took that risk, because if I didn't, I might not be here right now, because the production aspect of things that we were doing at the time, um, it, it wasn't really going anywhere. The direction was going to be technology and baseball. So for me, that's what changed everything. Uh, and I owe many thanks to my mentor at the time who gave me that opportunity and allowed me to make the mistakes I needed to make to get to where I am today. So for me, being a part of some of these huge initiatives that are now part of the game, like Instant Replay and Jimmy, you know the impact that that's had and pace of game, being able to say that I've participated in those projects, I've managed those projects, that's a huge accomplishment for me. So I think that that also kind of answers, you know, number two and number three, those projects, uh, you know, in the yeah. past six or seven years, we've implemented instant replay, we've implemented piece of game, tracking. So all player tracking, all of these different initiatives, I've been a part of that. I've been managing the team that's been executing all of the infrastructure at the ballpark. So for me, those are the highlights and we're not stopping, you know, as technology continues to grow and we continue to implement these various initiatives into baseball, we're just going to continue doing that work. So. Yeah, that's, that's a definitely a solid top three that you mentioned there. And that's the perfect segue to the next question we want to ask is, um, you know, how, How's the organization or, or your team or even the MLB, how, how are you planning to leverage technology to enhance the game day experience in the future? And I think that's the primary focus, uh, definitely of this year and, and, and the next few years to come. I think it's a bunch of different things. And first and foremost, we're connected to our devices, all of us. We're on our phone all the time, our iPads, our computers. It's with us 24 seven. We need to keep fan engaged, fans engaged when they go to the ballpark. And, you know, working with, with Jimmy and the rest of the team on enhancing our Wi Fi solutions, that's giving fans high speed access, high speed internet access. So they're able to access mobile ticketing. They can sit in their seat and they can order food. They can look up the scores for other you know teams and games that are going on that day or they could simply be on social media which is probably the number one thing that most people do taking pictures you're at the ball game you want to facetime your mom or your cousin so giving our fans the ability to do that it, it enhances the entire experience it's not just focused on the game but it's their experience at the ballpark and i think you know, we're going to continue to do that for the fans as well as invest in the experience for the players and coaches. You know, Jimmy and I were directly involved in installing the cloud-based access points that we're going to be using in the dugout this year for in-game video. And what that allows our coaching and players to do is access in-game video angles. 
as well as data for, for players. And, you know, to be, I'm sure you can attest to the fact of how helpful that can be in game. So the feedback that we've received from the coaching staff and the players have been overwhelmingly positive. And I think that just what we've been, um, what we've implemented the past few months is that it's a huge game changer. So I think it's two parts. It's enhancing the experience, not just for fans, making them want to come back to a baseball game um, and buy tickets and really immerse themselves in the experience. But it's, it's also to help the players and the coaches. Yeah, that's, I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. It's a, I mean, I can remember the last time I went to the ballpark. It's, it's just, I, I'll admit, I'm, I'm not the, you know, I go there just to watch the game, but I have some friends of mine that take it to the next level. My, my buddy's addicted to fantasy. And I, yeah. I was just making fun of him the whole time. He's there sitting with me. We're watching the Marlins game together. And on his phone, he's watching another game happen at the same time so he can count his points in real time. I'm like, dude, the game's right in front of you. <laughs> like, why, why are you watching you both? You want a like high-speed network yeah. to support yeah. that. You know, if you can't access your social media or other you know, streaming applications that you want to use, you can't access those. Yeah. your experience so i think there's a there's a heavy investment in making that better for the fans uh, absolutely and, and I, I think that's key for the future we just I mean, we see it all day, especially with the pandemic. Our data demands have just gone through the roof. I mean, I'm sure some of us here have had to upgrade their internet during the pandemic because, you know, you were used to paying, you know, just to use it at night. And now you're running an office and school and you're doing your regular, you know, Netflix, sometimes a little bit of all three at the same time. So uh, I'm sure the, the stadiums are probably 10x that responsibility. <laughs> and that's putting it lightly. So, um, Talk, talking about the infrastructure, you, you kind of mentioned, uh, you know, the cloud APs and the dugout that we're working on with you. So um, a lot of people in, in, in high tech here, they're, they're in, uh, you know, IT roles or something to that effect. And, and, you know, we've all had to do very big IT projects or been involved in some point in our lives. So um, what was it like to cloudify your infrastructure? Because I, I think for some people, they hear the word go into the cloud and might scare them or something. So what was your experience uh, going through that project with Extreme? So, first of all, it's a wonderful partnership and the Extreme team was very supportive and helpful to us during you know, the entire process. So it was definitely a solid collaboration. What was, what was interesting was the timeline. And we have been in this position before where we've had some pretty aggressive timelines to try to get uh, certain initiatives up before opening day. In this case, I think we were reaching out to the ballparks in December and we had everything completed by April opening day for each of the clubs. So there's multiple layers that go into it. First and foremost, you need to coordinate with each individual club because each individual ballpark is going to have a different setup, different access. Um, you have to use a different contractor that's local to the park. You, you need approvals. And you also need to approve someone coming in to survey and say, okay, this is where I'm going to hang everything. So you're dealing with you know, more than 30 different people from the clubs. Um, they're all our friends and they're amazing to work with. Once we pass that, you know, we're, we're still in the process of trying to get the equipment. And with the pandemic in so many different industries, there's been difficulty getting certain parts and some components for some of this hardware that we need. So we definitely had concerns that we weren't gonna get the hardware in time. But luckily, our vendors came through, and we worked with each of the local contractors to get cabling, conduit, power, HVAC, all of that set up. And then last but not least, getting our folks in to verify that the systems were functioning. So we had a very short timeline to make this happen. But like I said, once we did, this, it, it's been a fantastic experience, and the feedback has been so positive. So very glad that we were able to get that done by opening day. It sounds like you guys were off to the races there <laughs> trying to get that oh, timeline. So oh, from December to April, so that's getting oh. all the clubs up and running on, on cloud in four months. That's yeah. that's an aggressive timeline. And you guys were able yeah. to hit it. So we have, that's we have an amazing network infrastructure team. So and that that's it was even more of a challenge for them because from my group side, 
we had to hand it off to them. We had to get everything installed. Okay, now let's hand it over to you and you have to verify baseline functionality. So we didn't give them much time to do that at all. So definitely kudos to that team because they did a tremendous job making that happen. And I'm, I'm sure that's uh, what helps you be such a great leader in the MLB is having a great team that, you know, helps you accomplish your goals. Um, so what, what do you think has had a, how do you think this has had an impact on the MLB as an organization? Uh, not just currently, but like, what do you think it's going to do for the future of the MLB? Well, you know, just specifically for us, it's now centrally managed. So it's a lot easier for us to support and have that visibility into the system. And then, you know, going back to what I said earlier, I think it, it has a huge impact for the players and the coaching staff because, you know, they're sitting there with their iPads, which in many cases is shown on broadcast. So a lot of times you will see that. Um, and, you know, I think there's been less frustration, as simple as that sounds, less frustration from the players and the coaching staff because they're not running into issues where the iPads aren't working or they can't connect. So I think it's enhanced that entire experience. Where we go from here, not entirely sure. I think, you know, we'll probably circle back, Q3, Q4, and kind of figure out what the next steps are. Um, but we're going to continue working with Extreme on expanding, you know, Wi-Fi solutions with, you know, some of the other ballparks that aren't part of the Wi-Fi consortium. So there's definitely more work to be done, but in just this short period of time where we've executed these APs, um, it's been fantastic feedback. So we're really proud of that. That's awesome. And, that, that, and I'll personally admit, I, I love seeing, uh, at least at Extreme here, we're always sharing photos of when, whenever we see, uh, you know, Extreme in the dugouts or our APs hidden around. Um, you know, fun fact for us, for, for those high tech members, we, we actually just did our Extreme Connect event, which is our, our biggest customer event um, that we do every year. And uh, we, we were actually able to do it at Fenway Park. So it was really, really cool. And, uh, and, and our CTO actually took a behind the scenes of Fenway. So we got to see some, some stuff there. And it was, it was really exciting to see the, the green monster. I don't know if there's some Sox fans out there, but uh, it was really cool. I've, I, I, even I've never seen the, the, uh, the green giant, if you will. So it was nice. Um, so with that, with that being said, uh, you know, let's talk more about events. Um, I know MLB does, you guys obviously do the games, but there's some special events that you guys do on a regular basis and, um, what special events are coming up for the MLB and which one are you most excited about? So home run derby and all-star game are back. We're really excited about that. Obviously with the pandemic, we weren't able to experience that last year. Um, but this is, it makes us feel like things are headed back to normal. You know, we're selling tickets. We hopefully have a large crowd. Um, definitely excited about that. Also field of dreams in Iowa. We have replicated the field from the movie Field of Dreams, and um, we'll be playing a game there. So that's super important to us. Um, I'm actually most excited about JRTC. So JRTC is the Jackie Robinson Training Facility down in Vero Beach. And we've been collaborating with um, the lead team down there to expand and enhance the infrastructure down there to support our youth academy. So while it's not a specific event, um, once they launch and they open that up to our youth academy, we're really proud to have participated in, in that project. So that's what I'm most excited for. Uh, those are some exciting events coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll look forward to catch those either live or, or on TV if, uh, for those of us that can't be there. So, um, you know, before we start getting into q and I'm going to lodge two questions to both you, Ariana, and Jimmy, and, and feel free to, you know, well, go in as deep detail as you want. So what message would you provide to our listeners to, to help inspire the next generation? I think for me, which is something I'd like to work on as well, is getting the message out to those individuals, especially some of the younger groups, those that are in high school, those that are in middle school. I want them to know that these jobs exist because I didn't know that these jobs exist when I was coming into the workforce. Um, and I think that there is always such an emphasis on some of the traditional jobs that it's our responsibility to make sure that we're, we're spreading the word, whether that's, you know, contacting our alma mater and asking them if we can do a speaking engagement or 
working with your organization to attend job fairs. Um, maybe when you're hiring for specific roles, you're not just waiting for those you know, resumes to come in um, on LinkedIn or at NT, but you're actively going out and, and looking at colleges or trying to find individuals from, from certain schools and communities. Um, I think that that's important. I think you have to be actively looking for these people until they find that these jobs are available. And I also think for the, the individuals that are coming in at an entry level in your organization, mentor them. You know, kind of teach them what you know. Give them the opportunity to learn from you because I will say I've had fabulous mentors at MLB and I owe much of what I've learned to them. Um, so if you can do that for another person, I think that that's important. And I think that's how you can give back. Yeah, absolutely. And and thank you for those uh, those thoughts there. And hopefully some of you can take that back and and turn those into actionable items. I know here at Extreme, at least with, with all of our uh, our uh, employee uh, retention groups here between La Raza, which is for Hispanics, or what Wes is celebrating there, our pride group. We, we have one for literally every demographic. We're, we're definitely trying to do that here. So, um, and it's like you said, you, you, you know, education is key. I, I, I can tell you personally, I, I didn't think I was going to be in this industry. I didn't go to a school specifically for this position that I'm in. Uh, I'll be the first one to say, you know, I love my job and it's it's great, but I didn't know this existed going through the educational process. So uh, we just got to bring some more awareness out there and, and let the, the the younger generations know that, hey, these jobs exist. They're fantastic. And it's a great uh, fulfilling role that you can take on. So uh, with that, uh, Jimmy, I'll go ahead and pass it to you. Same question. What messages, what message would you provide to our listeners to help inspire the next generation? Um, well, I, I'll share, I guess, a piece of advice that I was given uh, early in my baseball career that's definitely carried over into uh, my career now. Um, I had just gotten drafted and I was sent to short season rookie ball, which is in, uh, at that point, it was in Vermont. Um, and I was there for about two weeks. I put together, you know, two weeks of pretty good outings. And uh, I got called into the coach's office um, after a game one night. And so I was in the office with our pitching coach and our manager. They were letting me know that I was being promoted to the next level. Um, the next level is low A. It doesn't sound like a promotion, but it, <laughs> but it is. Um, so I was told I was being, you know, shipped out the next day, going to, going to low A. Um, so I was excited. And, you know, after the little congratulations and stuff, my manager kind of sat me down. And he said, uh, no matter what, no matter what level you reach, don't ever feel you don't belong there. And at the, at the time I heard what he was saying, but I, I don't think I really understood what he was saying. So, uh, you know, I went on to, to the next level and then it wasn't until like maybe a couple of years later when I was in, you know, maybe double A or triple A where I started looking around and, and, you know, seeing these first round draft picks, these prospects, these guys that I've heard about or seen on TV, or, you know, guys that I'm playing with now where it was very easy for that self-doubt to kind of creep in and go, what am I doing here? Do I belong here? You know, can I compete here? Can I play here? You know, all those different questions. And, and that's when, you know, that piece of advice really kind of crept back in and make it, making more sense was I'm at this level because, you know, I, I worked hard to get here. So I'm going to, I'm going to play like I belong here. And I think that's something that, you know, going from, professional baseball and into the corporate world and IT and feeling kind of like that fish out of water, that same thought has, has crept up quite a bit where, you know, I'm, I'm in a big meeting or I'm presenting to, you know, customer or CEOs or whoever it is. And, you know, it's very easy to go like, what am I doing in this meeting right now? But, you know, it's that same piece of advice back then that, that creeps back in of like, I need to, I need to participate. Like I deserve to be here and belong belong here so that's something that uh, that I tell a lot of the kids that I work with in my lessons is you know whatever level they reach you, you deserve to be there so so work work hard at it and try to get to the next one so um, I think just carrying that message uh, to the next generation is extremely important and you know again back to Ariana's point is just you know making sure that everyone is aware of opportunities that are out there and don't be afraid to jump on them because you know, we all deserve a chance. And when we get there, we deserve to act like we've been there or like we deserve to be there. 
Uh, so some sound advice from both of you, and thank you for answering that question. And, and um, you know, that that kind of concludes our, our fireside chat, if you will. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, open up the floor to, to any questions that the audience may have for either Ariana or Jimmy. Don't be shy. Feel free to open your mics up. So <clears throat> I have a question regarding uh, La Raza or the, the Hispanic organization inside of extreme uh what's what the percentage of members you know how big the organization is and how how many hispanics are there great question uh, i don't know i, I saw lewis our, our leader of la raza was was about to speak there you want to you want to comment on that there lewis yeah hey everybody um you know great job everyone thank you so much ariana jimmy just fantastic <laughs> topics powerful words uh, so La Raza got started in uh, December of last year. So we've got, you know, a little over 53 members now. Um, and that number continues to grow. So, you know, one of the big things that we're just trying to do is, you know, Adriana was talking about it. We're, we're trying to reach out at the high school level and really trying to start there because, you know, so many kids nowadays think that they've got to be either a doctor, lawyer, you know, one of those type of titles, right? And that's not fairly true. So we're trying to reach out there and show them that there are other careers and there are other opportunities. Um, and, you know, our goal is to increase, if we want to look at Hispanic population at extreme, it's about 3.6%. Um, so we're trying to add it by December, roughly another you know, 15, uh, if we can, 15 to 16 uh, Hispanics uh, in the U.S. I have a question. question. Okay. Go ahead, Pablo. Yeah, go ahead. So um, I'm rocking the uh, Colorado Rockies hat in honor of Linda Alvarado, who is a dear friend of many years, and she's actually hosting my son and I for a game uh, July 20th or 21st. So love Linda. She's an awesome pioneer in the space, and she's one of, one of the uh, one and only, kind of like you described, Ariana. I've uh, published about 200 stories in the national media. Many Latina leaders have said that. I'm the one and only, only Hispanic, only woman at the table. And so my question for really all three of you is, how can we get more Hispanics and more women into not only Major League Baseball, but also pro sports and technology for that matter? I mean, Viviana probably could chip in with that with high tech, but really, really I would say all three. So uh, uh, Hispanics and women, MLB, pro sports, and might as well throw technology in as well. Yeah, I think from, from my perspective, that it's exactly what I said before. Reaching out to high schools and reaching out in our communities and just getting the word out that you can, these jobs are available. You can do these jobs. And in many cases, for some individuals, let's be honest here, the thought of going to a four-year school is daunting, or maybe there's financial limitations, and your GPA isn't that high, so you can't get a scholarship, so some people just don't even go to college, but there are jobs in technology where you don't necessarily have to go to a traditional four-year school, so I think that needs to, that message somehow needs to get out, and I guess I would be that's contacting, you know, colleges or local schools, or even working with your own organization, how you can reach out to these individuals, I think is crucial. Um, as far as women in sports, I will tell you the women are there. The women are there. They're just not being elevated to the next level. They're in more of the traditional jobs like executive assistant or coordination. Um, they're not given the opportunity to really advance to the next stage, but that's also part of the organization investing in these women, allowing them to take classes that are being provided you know, by your company, just as if you would a project manager taking their PMP credits and having that expense through the company, or you know, some of our engineers, they go in get certification on, on fiber and cabling. It's the same thing. You know, if, if, you're, if you have an interest in advancing your role, you should be given the opportunity because yes, I have been the only Hispanic person or the only 
woman in the room, but I look around in other areas and I see women who can very well work their way up to be in these positions. So the opportunity needs to be there. Um, but I do, just from what I've seen, even when we put up, up postings, one time we'll put up a posting, I'm like, I'm not getting female candidates. And I'm thinking to myself, where are they? Well, if they're not coming to me, then I need to go out and find the individual. That's my responsibility. If I want to create a diverse working environment, I need to go out and find them. And I'm going to have to do that by looking on LinkedIn or reaching out to various schools or, like I said, working with my organization to see how we can get involved in any sort of high school job fairs or activities. Um, they, I just don't think that there is a solid awareness for young females um, in sports and, and technology specifically. And actually, um, oh, sorry, I was, I was going to mention our, our, uh, our we, we actually have our, our CMO on the line, Wes uh, Duro, and um, he, we actually have a joint venture with MLB and Extreme to help promote that very uh, question we're trying to address, which is, you know, getting more women in sports and technology. Wes, you want to comment on that? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's hugely personal because I, I have a 23 year old daughter who I, I encourage to, you know, um, focus on technology. She, she, she just finished her master's degree, works at, 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 at uh, Texas Instruments. And, and um, you know, I, I, the diversity is something we have to, to actively embrace and seek. And so uh, when we build our, our relationship with, with, Major League Baseball. It wasn't just about um, the technology. You know, it's it's about um, doing good while we do well. And it actually was something was organic to, to both organizations. I was, you know, there's Ariana is a, an incredible representation of of MLB and the technology community there. But gosh, if if you were to spend time not just with her but her colleagues, you find that that um, they really have an incredible team there, and we feel like we do uh, have a great team of female leaders at extreme as well. So we have put together a series of forums. Um, there's some unique things that that Major League Baseball does with their annual IT summit. But how do we bring more girls into this um, into this fold and show them, you know, what the future looks like? The lady that actually runs the fan experience for Major League Baseball, um, Kari, is re really a unique individual. And one of the big things that we see that's been pretty interesting because of our insights is what is it fans actually do at the games? And so we have one stadium we know where, you know, people going on Bumble is a big deal. So you give that information back to the team and they start doing dating nights and, and meetup nights and they actually got Bumble as a sponsor. We have another one where um, the team realized that, that Wayfair is a, is a big app being used at, at a game. And I had no idea what Wayfair was until my wife decided to remodel our house after living in it 14 years. And now I know all too well what Wayfair is. But, but that's another chance to bring another demo, more women back to the games, younger people into the games. And so I, I just, it, it's about, you know, passing on a great sport, a great cultural experience to the next generation. So uh, I, thanks for giving me the chance to comment on it, but I, I couldn't be prouder of, of that initiative, Mitch. If I can add on to, to what he said, you know, my experience, um, you know, that was early on. I can tell you that in the past five or six years, MLB has introduced some remarkable women and has easily put them in, in VP and senior director roles. And I think the current, the, the way our current organization is set up, we have is some extraordinary women in these roles and i think that that's an example of what you have to do you know start going out finding these women and putting them in those executive roles if i can add this is viviana i just want to add to the conversation a little bit um you know i commend extreme networks for the work that you're doing and ariana also for like you know showing how you're reaching out to the people that aren't coming to you because that's extremely important and that's what we need to continue doing I think one of the important aspects is, you know, um, if I can see it, I can be it, right? And I think one of the things that high tech that we do is we spotlight people that are in these roles um, because if people can't see themselves in these roles, then it's really much harder for them to aspire to be in these roles. And so um, I think that goes across, you know, sports technology and, and other industries, what have you. And so if we can continue doing that, then I think we can continue advancing and moving in the needle. And in that space, you know, Adriana, you know, being in the sports and technology space, 
I'll, if you're open to it, invite you to, to chat with our high tech scholars. These are students that are in the high school and college space. And if they see you in this space, man, I think, you know, they'd be so inspired to continue and follow in those kinds of footsteps. So appreciate it. I would, I would absolutely that. Ariana, I have um, a quick question for you. Um, you know, you were mentioning that in the office or within the organization, there are other women and, and they're trying to work through, you know, getting promoted or getting those opportunities. What, a, what kind of uh, obstacles or barriers did you encounter and how did you overcome them? I think there's been a huge shift, like I had mentioned, you know, earlier. We've gone through a reorg, a reshuffling, we've brought in new talent and I couldn't be more proud of the way that our organization is, is currently structured. Um, we have some, uh, as I said, we have some really remarkable women that are in senior executive roles, and I'm pleased of where we are right now. And we're still going to continue to do the work to bring in more diverse candidates as positions open up. But you know, ten years ago, eight years ago, that wasn't entirely the case, and I think. For me, what I observed at the time was that the women that were in the roles that they were in were limited because they didn't have the technical background. And that was a huge focus and a huge requirement for what was needed to pull off you know, these initiatives. And that was, it, that was just the case. Um, like I said, I didn't come from a technical background. I had to learn everything you know, through my peers and exposure to certain projects and being out in the field and actually seeing how things work. But, you know, as I mentioned, as you start to bring awareness that these jobs are possible, as you start, you know, letting young women know that they can attend these types of courses or these types of schools in order to attain jobs in technology, you start to see that shift. And like I said, the past five or you know, so years, I started to see the shift in which there were women, not only in technical roles, but also in senior executive roles. And um, you know, I got to hand it to MLB for making that shift possible and empowering women to, to apply or reaching out to those candidates and interviewing them and just letting them get their foot through the door. So there's certainly been a shift. But I think it does come back to not having the training or not having the technical background and feeling as though you can't do these jobs because you don't have that. And I think that's a lot different pieces. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> I didn't ask the question and you answered it. So thank you. Well, does anybody else have questions for Ariana, Jimmy, or you know anybody? There's a question in the chat from from Terrence. He's saying, "Having a technical background, how do you break into the sports arena?" Who wants to answer that? It's a great question. I don't know if J Jimmy that or Ariana, you can you guys comment on that either one. So, if you have a technical background. So a lot of times, and there have been individuals that I've hired for engineering roles that may not necessarily have the exact criteria that, that I need for the role, but I see something else in them when I'm interviewing. And for me, I, I, I like to give those individuals, I like to take a chance on those individuals and give them an opportunity to learn the way that I did. Um, because if you see certain element in a person or a certain quality or characteristic you know, people will pick things up and there are certain things that you can teach a person and I don't want to just sit there and not see that on their resume and, you know, say, okay, well, this isn't a fit. Um, and you'd be surprised. Some of our strongest employees are individuals who, who didn't have uh, experience in a, in a certain area. So I think that um, there are plenty of technical jobs in sports, especially these days. So I would strongly advise anyone who has a technical background that would like to get into the sports industry just because they simply love the, the sport, um, the jobs are there. The jobs are certainly there. Uh, Ariana, my experience is I think it, it's like any other segment. It's, it's about 
effort and initiative is is job mm -hmm. one. So, and you mm -hmm. have to, you, you know, uh, Jimmy knows this. My son is playing in the Northwoods League this summer. So when you talk about Field of Dreams and such, my uncle lives like six miles away. So I'm in Iowa for the summer. Not that it's a vacation hotspot, but I, I grew up here. So, um, but but the beautiful thing is, you see these Northwoods leagues, people start there in technology and earn their stripes to the Cape Cod, and then they go to a minor league team and then they work there. So if somebody wants to get in this, it's just like being an announcer or anything else. Um, effort and initiative and building a network, it doesn't matter whether it's any segment, that, that is a universal truth. Hard work pays off. And, and I think that's the, the biggest thing I've witnessed. The people that have made a journey to where Ariana is have been flexible enough to do a number of things to get, get to the point that she's at. Ariana, this is Selena. Uh, I am just absolutely fascinated by your story, especially because I love to hear about when people start off as something and then they take a chance and go into something else completely different. It takes a special type of person to believe that they can do that. And not there's so many things going against you, right? Working against you, but you still take that chance and walk through the doors. I think that's so awesome. And Thank I congratulate you. you. But I was wondering if you Thank could you. share with us um, being that you switched over into the technology space, is there a go-to, what is your go-to resource or source or publication that you go to to keep up with the, with the trends in technology and what's happening? Hey, um, obviously with the pandemic, there's been certain limitations, but traditionally it's been attending various trade shows as a group and MLB offers us the opportunity to go out to NAB and IBC and some of these trade shows. So for me, that's more valuable than, you know, reading content or, you know, reading articles because I can actually talk to these vendors. I can see the equipment. I can see what they're offering and they can explain it to me because like I said, I don't have the technical background. I have to learn every day is, is, is I have to learn something new just so I can stay up in current um, and you know, be alongside my peers. Uh, at the same time, MLB also offers resources to us. We have um, training programs and classes um, that they offer us online so I can go to, you know, these programs and just look up whatever I need to. Um, and there, you know, I, I'm able to take classes if I want to. Several years ago, I did my project management courses. So I think there's a lot of useful tools out there for me, but I would say I benefit the most actually going to these trade shows. Um, and hopefully this year, we can pick that back up. I know IBC is going to be in December in Amsterdam. So I'm really hoping that we can get out there again. Um, but yeah, that, that to me has been the most value because I'm a hands-on person. I need to see how it works. I need to talk to you. Um, and then that's how I gained the knowledge. And my peers. I mean, I, we have a phenomenal group of peers and on Slack, people are constantly sharing articles or literature, um, you know, funny things on Twitter or things of interest. So I think it's just sharing along with your peers as well. Thank you. Thanks, Arina. Thanks, Selena, for the question. I want to take this opportunity because we are a minute over our session. Um, we will be staying on for those that can stay for additional Q&A and conversation. So please stick around. But if you can't, we appreciate you being here. Ariana, Jimmy, Mitch, Extreme Networks, MLB. Honestly, this was an amazing conversation. I look forward to a follow-up because um, I know that there's more to talk about, but really want to thank all of you um, for being here with us today. So thank you so, so much. And, right. and thank you. Thank you, High Tech, for giving uh, Extreme and MLB the opportunity to, to share our combined stories together. I think uh, everybody probably took something away from this conversation. I certainly did. So. Absolutely. It is a beautiful partnership. You can see that through and through, and we can't wait to continue learning more. So thank you all of you for, for sharing with us today. All right. Thanks so much you for the opportunity. Program? Okay. Of course. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> all right. So whoever wants to stay, please stick around. Um, if not, we'll see you at the next High Tech Live. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>